welcome back to your automation training channel. Today we're going to be working with Siemens TIA Portal version 14 service pack 1 update 2. Um, we're going to create a brand new project. I have an S7 1500 processor here and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how fast it is to create a brand new project, upload the configuration information from the controller, and then we're going to write just a little bit of code, download to it, and test it out. So the first thing you're going to want to do is we're going to want to come over here in the start tab. We're going to go down to create a new project. We're going to go ahead and just call this YouTube Tutorial 1 Siemens version 14. You can change the author, throw in some comments if you'd like. We're going to continue. We're going to go ahead and select Create. So we want to go ahead and configure a device. So we can show all the devices you can go out and find it, but we're going to add a new device. We're going to select the controllers. We're going to go to the S7-1500 CPU, and we're going to scroll down to Unspecified CPU-1500. We'll select Add. Okay, the first view that it's going to pull you into is going to be the device view. So this is going to show the 1500 uh, unspecified controller that we have in here. So we're going to want to come down here and select detect, but before we do that, because we are wired, not wireless, we're going to go to... We're going to <laughs> grr. Okay, we're going to go in and we're going to go to local area connection. We'll go to properties and we're going to make sure that our, our static we're set to static IP address and that we are in the same subnet or in the same uh, IP network as the controller is on. And so what happens is that this one uh, is 192.168.0 uh, whatever number it is I don't remember but we're going to find out real shortly. So once you have that set we can go in and select detect and then the type of the PGPC interface is Profinet and then we're going to select the one that we have available which is our land our land connection and then we're going to start the search it's going to go out it's going to find it by its MAC address it's going to pull it in and uh, as you can see here the processor is sitting on 192.168.0.26 you can flash the LEDs on it make sure that they're flashing I can see them from here I wish I had another camera so you could see it. So, but we're going to go ahead and highlight this processor and then we're going to select the detect. And what it's going to do is it's going to go out and it's going to pull all the information configuration files and upload it into your device view. So here it shows the controller and two cards. We have a digital input card and a digital output card. So we're going to go to the controller and we're going to change now one thing first. And we're going to go clear this one happened to be there but normally you'd sit here on uh, and come up you go to the top of the list select general if for some reason yours is just showing um, I don't know if this one lets it no okay but we'll start with we'll go ahead and start with the general and we can change the name of uh, the PLC to whatever you'd like it to be like line one or whatnot the author of the program um, any comments etc we're going to scroll down the list all the way down to where it says protection and security level on this controller anyway and then our access level we're going to do full access, uh, full access including fail safe so now that that's checked all this stuff is up here we need to compile uh, this device so we'll go ahead and select the compile button right at the top of the window here we're going to compile it so go through um, make all the changes, make sure everything's good and we don't have any errors. And it looks like we're fine. So we're going to go ahead and download the configuration right to the controller. So um, highlight the project and then download to our device. It's going to pull up this uh, synchronization window. It's telling us that what's in the controller is different than the project we're going to load to it. Uh, it says that manual synchronization is required. You can select this and do an offline comparison, but we're going to go ahead and continue without synchronization. 
it's going to stop the controller. It's letting you know that uh, protection that you have a protection warning saying that somebody could access it because you have no password on it, which we don't care about that now. Those will be later. So we're going to go ahead and load it. And now it brings up this screen here, so we can start, we can put the controller back into run mode, or you can uncheck it and select finish, and it won't put it in run mode, but we'll go ahead and leave it in run mode. And now we can come down to our file here, it says program blocks, and we can open up our main organizational block, and there's your first network or rung in this instance. Um, we'll go down to PLC tags and it has a default table but um, we're not going to use the default table. We'll add a new one. We'll rename the table. So I right clicked on it. We're going to go down to uh, rename and we'll call it TTY1 and now we'll go in here and it's completely blank. So. I just wanted to add another table and right now we're going to add a normally open contact and an output. We're going to call this start button and this one on our output is going to be motor one. So now that you have a red squiggly line under this, it means we need to define the tag. We'll come down uh, here and we'll def press define we're going to go ahead and use a global memory bit for this one um, but let's change this and put this tag into the table that we just made so we're going to go ahead and select define then we're going to come over to the output we're going to go to define this tag as well now we're going to switch the selection down to a global output we're going to fire a real world output um, let's say we don't want it to be uh, output zero we want it to be output 3, we can go in and change that to 3 and we can go over here to our tag data, our PLC tag the table and we'll select the same table that we created a minute ago and we can define it. So now that we have this in we can go ahead and go up and we need to compile this block to make sure that we have no errors looks like everything is fine, no errors, no warnings we'll go ahead and download this to the controller we're going to go ahead and select load. Now that it's loaded, let's go up here and select this um, the CPU, and we're going to select go online. And everything is online. We have no errors. Everything's green, which is good. So let's come over into the organizational block here, and let's go up here to where these little glasses are. And this is where we can toggle to go online with this block. So we're going to monitor this block and now it shows that we have power up to our normally open contact and we want to go ahead and toggle this or force the value or modify it to one so that we can fire our output you can either right click on it and go over to modify and you can go over and modify it to one or you can press control F2 so I selected uh, it from this menu here and as you can tell uh, the output should be on and as if I look over I see our output is on I come back over here I can highlight the block I press control F3 and that'll force it back to a zero so as you can tell within a matter of minutes we were able to get find the to add the unspecified controller detect the controller that we have out there pull all the information from it up able to change the, the access setting download the configuration to the controller, go into our program blocks, modify our organizational block one, throw a couple throw a line of code into it, and we also created a tag uh, a tag table and defined our tags all within a matter of minutes. Uh, new software is uh, really good. I like it and I'm uh, been buying more and more uh, Siemens automation equipment but coming up in the next few tutorials we'll go through timers and counters and 
then we'll add an HMI and so forth. I hope this was informational for you. Um, we'll get into more of the uh, functions and other items on uh, within this uh, window or within the software and be able to help you learn more and more as we go. So thank you for watching and leave any comments, questions uh, below. Hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks a lot.